Cool. Well, guys, uh, we're in James and uh, I kind of I was just praying like, God, I hope James has something to say to what we're going through this week, because it, it feels like, God, uh, we, we might need to pull an audible. We might need to to just see something uh, really, really obviously relevant. But I know God's spirit, uh, his word is living and active. And really, no matter where we go, there's only something there for us uh, and a, a timely word. Um, all over his scriptures. So we're in James 2. We've been going through that book, but um, I just want to say I'm really grateful for this family. I think, um, I don't know if you heard, but we, uh, we've we had a hurricane this week, and so it's been a special kind of week. Um, but I, 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 we've all been through some different experiences, you know, like calling around, getting the scoop. Uh, we've all had some very different experiences. Some of us lost power uh, for a second or got a half inch of rain. Um, but uh, some of us have been stuck in their houses like us for four or four days or so. We just got out yesterday. Um, some of us have flooding in our houses. Um, and so I just want to say that um, we're here for you guys. And, and I, I think perhaps some of us are going through things and maybe aren't wanting to let others know we need help, even if it's just to pick up a fence. But I just want to encourage you guys that uh, we have the opportunity uh, to help each other if we let each other know we need help. Um, and so please, please don't don't hold back. Um, you can even use the chat to just just say, hey, call me if you're able to help, something like that. Um, but yeah, some of us left unscathed. Some of us perhaps are still hurting. And uh, if not us, I know that our neighbors are. And so uh, we're here for you. I think God's family is meant to shine brightest in times like this. I know that our neighborhood especially has, has been pretty much underwater um, for the last four days until yesterday. Uh, thank you, Eves Benjamin. I think he might be one of the heroes. Um, I always want to take the opportunity to thank him. But he's our wastewater management um, hero. So thank you, man, for all the work you did with sewage and all of that. I have no idea, but grateful um, just for all the first responders and things. So, but yeah. Um, there are a lot of silver linings. I think one of them is meeting new neighbors. And uh, it's no coincidence even that on Wednesday nights, we're going through a series just talking about how we can be aware of and love our neighbors. And that's been going on for about two classes now. And uh, I'm just curious here, raise your digital emoji hand if, if you've met a new neighbor this week. Love to know. Okay, yeah, I see some hands in the flesh, some digital hands. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a silver lining. Maybe you got a hot meal. I got a really, we live in a, a neighborhood that's mostly uh, Puerto Rican. And uh, we got a really, really awesome meatloaf with chorizo and um, pork chops and all kinds of things. Because um, we've been having uh, some charcoal parties and, and bringing, bringing meat to the, to the grill, right? Um, maybe you've pushed some cars. Maybe you've, you've seen some cars stuck in front, maybe you've had some people in your home, um, and uh, I don't know, but uh, a lot of a lot of great things. I've met some new neighbors. Um, one of the challenges is actually for our class is get to know your neighbors and get to know their names. And so, I think this week uh, God has, has has called all of us to do that. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to look at the screen all that much. I have handwritten notes. Uh, this is this is what a life with no power looks like. <laughs> but um just just grateful man to to get to james here so you guys are in james too right um but i guess to end my intro here we all have hopefully just a different outlook um an outlook more to be grateful for perhaps uh you still have your roof over your head and i, I think that's the case for most of us um perhaps maybe you're more grateful for the simple things in life like it like an ice cube um right? That I, I finally got an ice cube today. It was, it was awesome. Or, or just a healthy view, I think, of how fragile life really is. And I think that that, um, if you've been in touch, maybe you've had power, you can see images on other, on other cities. I know um, Naples needs to be in our prayers. Um, but maybe you do have just a great perspective now of how fragile life is, because we forget that really quickly. Um, how like if life is to go on at all, we are at the mercy of God and his help. So our text today in James 2 is in verse 8 through 13. 
And it's about just that. It's about mercy. It's about mercy and neighbors, actually. And so, God, thank you for your word and how timely it really is. Let's read it, okay? Um, James 2, 8 through 13. Yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. For the person who keeps all of the laws except one is as guilty as a person who has broken all of God's laws. For the same God who said you must not commit adultery also said you must not murder. So if you murder someone, but you do not commit adultery, you've still broken the law. So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. Um, so yeah, James 2, 8 through 13. You know, last week we began this train of thought um, kind of seeing how God forbids favoritism in how we treat each other, that we, we, aren't, we aren't to treat people as we see them um, according to their face, right? Whatever that means, their, their status, their wealth, um, their color, their ethnicity, no external factors, financial factors, any of it is to determine how we treat others. Um, because when we do that, we are not living up to God's law. And, and what we landed on last week was the opening verse for this week, um, our sermons overlap quite a bit. And the opening verse for this week is the one you guys need to memorize and know because it's all over the Bible. And it's this, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. You heard it all, you, you know, you, you heard all about this before the storm. Like last week, you had a sermon on this, which is so timely too, right? So church, how did it go this week? For you did you guys look to serve did you look to meet your neighbors did you look for needs did you check up on others did you offer to meet needs or did you complain and just notice your own i think it could have gone one of two ways and it really was an incredible opportunity to live it out an incredible opportunity so did you that's a question that maybe you can keep to yourself um I, I, I hope the answer is a resounding yes. And I'll say I've heard of quite a few people um, really just meeting needs, looking um, to, to, to help others. Um, but it was quite the test this week, I, I would say, for us. And as a church, I would say that this call is, is quite the call, that if we do fail to live up to it, man, the church has failed indeed. And so we, we have, it, the work is not done especially relating to a storm, but the call wasn't because there was a hurricane. It is a call that has stood and it was, it went out last week. It will always be here in your Bible. And so I think to get this, um, to know that this is the royal law and that this is the greatest commandment um, after loving the Lord our God, it's so important. Um, and I think if you feel, as you look back on your week, like, you know, I think day one, day two, it was, it was exciting. We were wondering what would happen. And I've kind of thought about my own life the last three, two, three days and haven't really regarded anyone. Um, perhaps um, you'll find in this text mercy for you um, as you start anew this, this coming week. And I think it's a really hopeful text. So I want to give you a title uh, for our text this morning. And I don't always, I don't always um, think to, to give a title um, where it's not, it's not there, but uh, the title for our lesson is The Law of Love, and I'll, it'll be clear why that is as we unfold the text. So let's dig in. We got verses 8 and 9, okay? So let's just go verse 8 and 9. Yes, indeed, it's good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures, love your neighbor as yourself, but if you favor some people over others, you're committing a sin and you're guilty of breaking the law. Um, so the, the meaning of this law uh, kind of, me, meaning this law, it sums up not just like a regulation, right? But this is the most like what God's kingdom is like. If it could be summed up, boiled down, it's neighbors loving neighbors. That's what God's kingdom is all about. Neighbors loving neighbors. Um, 
And our God, he's a great king. He is a king. This is a kingdom. And this is his mandate for those who are going to live in his kingdom, right? No matter their differences, no matter their language, their paychecks, none, nothing matters um, really in his kingdom, except who's the king and who are his, 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 his people. So if, if you're interested in following or continuing to follow Jesus, the call on your life from start to middle to end is always the call to love other people, to love others. Um, now, mind you, the caveat here is we're going to sin. We're going to fall short. We're all sinners. And there's, there's no uncertainty about that. You know, you've blown it. You've fallen short. You know it. Um, even this week, striving to meet needs, I, even yesterday, just, just realizing, man, I, I let people down. <laughs> like, I, I fall short, you know, and, and I, live, I live with a great family that we're, we're striving to live this out, but my wife will let me know when I'm falling short, and I'm grateful for that, and she's awesome, um, and, and I know it. I know I've fallen short, and I know that I'm going to do that again, um, time and time again, pretty soon or soon enough. Um, and I know because of me, and I know that you're that way because we're all made of the same stuff. Um, I'm a sinner to the core, selfish, proud, um, struggling with self-control from time to time. And I fall short in my love all of the time. It, I think, uh, being a dad showed me the limit of my love and then God has let it grow a little. And then things like this happen and I can go. And then there's a limit to my love in and of myself unless God changes me and helps me grow. Um, in verse nine, it says, if you favor someone over others, you're sinning, essentially, right? And the command to love neighbors as yourself, uh, even favoritism in your own direction, I think seeing from the scripture, it would seem that favoring yourself over others violates the royal law. So let's just say there, I think all of us fail at that a lot of times, and yet we need to strive to love others as ourselves. So there's not even a favoritism at that point. That's challenging. Um, so the thing is, you know, we're all guilty of sin. No one escapes falling short. Me too. We all need a second chance or maybe a third or fourth or a fifth. Uh, if you only need a fifth chance, you're probably doing really great. I think we need lots of grace. Um, but every sin, no matter what, from, from the opening of this text, it can be boiled down to a violation of this royal law, right? If he, he uses two sins that are used in the Sermon on the Mount. And we know that from the book of James, he borrows heavily from Matthew 5 through 7, the Sermon on the Mountain. Um, and he uses the example of murder, which that violates love others. That's pretty obvious. Adultery, right? Um, there's no love in that. Theft, pride, slander, greed, immorality, gluttony, whatever, debauchery, um, it's all boiled down to no love, not enough love, loving self too much, thinking about self and your own pleasure, your own needs reign when we fall into any of these sins. That's how it is. You know, sometimes we get bogged down in a sin and we want to parse out, is it this or is it that? What is it? Right. And that might be helpful if you just need a clue. But if you need a clue, they all, no matter what, have no equal regard for their neighbor. And so I would encourage you to grow in this and you will watch everything else in your life kind of fade out as you grow more and more like Christ. You grow more and more as someone who's filled with love. So let's look at verses 10 through 11. James 2, 10 through 11. Just again, for the person who keeps all the laws except one is as guilty as the person who's broken all of God's laws. For the same God who said you must not commit adultery also said you must not murder. So if you murder someone, but you have not committed adultery, you've still broken the law. Um, all right. So uh, I think what he's saying here is you can't just pick and choose um, how you would love, love others, right? That you have to take all of God's ways seriously. The call to love your neighbor, you can't just pick and choose. You want to, I want to do it in this area, not that. God cares about the wholeness of his law. He cares about all of it. 
And, and the whole law is to be kept if we're to be justified by the law. And that's, if, if that's your aim, to be justified by the law, we got to keep it all. It's all or nothing, right? Obeying God is all or might as well be nothing. Um, for example, right? Hurricane examples here. If you were putting up shutters and you had a hammer and you're nailing in, in your shutters, we put up shutters. I'm glad we did. But then you nail straight through your thumb. Nail comes out the other side, right? Thumb's bleeding. Your whole body would be down and out. It wouldn't be, um, no, you, you're not mostly okay. I'm good, right? <laughs> one, one law is broken, but yeah, no, it's, it's all gone. So also maybe you got a leak in your roof. We had a leak in our roof the week before the hurricane. Thank God it got fixed. But you don't neglect that and think my, my roof is mostly okay. It's about one square inch, not okay. Um, but no, no, it's, it's, it's all or nothing. You want a good roof. If your fence blew out, right? One, two, three panels, you got 20 in total, but it's mostly still standing. You can't truly say you're fenced in, right? At least your dog wouldn't say you're fenced in. Um, or if, if you got 50 sandbags, that's quite a bunch, but if you used all of them, but you neglected to cover most of your window and there's a little part that the water comes in it really matters. It, the wholeness of it matters, right? If you want your flood insurance to see and say that your house is flooded and they say, well, it's just one room. No, it's, you're good, right? You don't really need us. The house isn't technically flooded. No, like you want, you want the wholeness to be considered. It, it's the same with the law. When it's broken, it's broken. One or all, it's all the same. It's broken. So what we can both agree on here is that Number one, if, if there's something you've fallen short in this week, you should take the time to go through the effort to connect it. Here's the challenge. Connect it with a violation of the royal law. I, I'm not going to pretend that because the hurricane came, we, we aren't struggling with, with our own sinful natures, right? Some of them have nothing to do with the hurricane. Um, but take the time to think through if it's lust, if it's pride, if it's greed, um, whatever it is, maybe it's selfishness, a lot of cabin fever brings out maybe the worst in a lot of us. Um, but I would just encourage you to connect it with the royal law. How does what I'm struggling with boil down to loving others deficiently? And, 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 and make that realization. And then number two, realize that you can't rely on the law anymore. And if you were, it's, it can't save you anymore. You've broken it, right? And now you need mercy. And so you need to, to come to grips with that, that you need mercy. Because if you were aiming to be justified by the law, that's a, that's a hopeless pursuit. So how do we have mercy, right? I love the connection here in verse 12 and 13 about mercy. Um, James 2, 13, uh, 12, 13. So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you've been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. Or the ESV says, mercy triumphs over judgment. Um, so after making clear that, you know, all of our own, we've broken God's law, there's talk of and need for mercy. Mercy, right? Because people know that... Um, People that know mercy firsthand are the kind that know how to extend it. In verse 12, it, it, it says, whatever you say or do. And so I see those as, as very much actionable words. This is talk about a lifestyle that naturally expands from a life that keeps in mind the mercy of God and one's need for God's mercy. I, I would say even for myself, um, mercy for me, has been something I've needed to grow in quite a bit this this second half I'd say the second era of my walk with God last several years just thinking about mercy and and um man like that is one of the biggest attributes of God that I think I have not um adequately like studied and 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 understood even experienced in a sense and it, it comes down to understanding grace and I'm so excited um just for for, for growing more and more 
and understanding God's mercy and, and how that transforms me and, and, and those that understand it to be merciful ourselves. Um, but the word mercy, like, I don't know, that word kind of hangs in the air awkwardly for me. Um, mercy. I, I would say, I don't know about you, but that word to me, because of maybe how the world is, um, it seems to have, have like a negative connotation. Mercy, mercy. It feels like a word that in parentheses means weak. Um, subtly, it, it means weak in my mind. There's a voice in our culture that says only the weak need mercy, right? The popularity of um, UFC fighting, you know, like you tap out in high school, I did wrestling and it was all about surrendering if you're weak if you're too weak you'll surrender uh or or getting someone else to that point where where they need your mercy um and and uh you know even the tagline maybe you've heard show no mercy right um or you know just just the kind of movies that we uh our our culture loves and feeds us um the john wick series and the like are all about mercy being something for the weak um right or, or even the game as a kid i used to play this game with my hands it's called mercy but we basically lock hands and maybe we can play digitally here um, but you'd lock hands and you just twist and see who is strong enough and who could essentially I, this sounds horrible saying it out loud but you're trying to like twist the other person's wrists and like break their wrists but they're doing the same to you so you're trying to, to beat them out and the only way the game ends is someone cries mercy. Um, and, and someone always does. But I think that um, that's so different than the God that we, we serve. He is a God of mercy. He is a God of mercy. And he is not weak. And we need to know that about our God. Um, you've heard it said before that God is a mercy millionaire. That he is very rich in mercy. He delights to show mercy. Verse 12, if you look down in your scripture, it could be said differently. It could be said, keep in mind in the way you live, you will need mercy eventually. Eventually, when? When God judges you. That's verse 12, my version. That's what I see, that eventually we are going to need mercy, no matter what we think about it. Um, or, or how we interact with it. And that's a really scary thought. When, when God judges us, you will have to answer for every infraction, every sin, every breaking of God's love that we have done. Now, if true, which I, I would love to feel like that's not true, God, like, please say it's not true or have mercy. I'll take it. Verse five, uh, in, in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, verse 7 uh, do you know that? Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. If that's true, then this verse sounds so sweet to my ears, right? That's the kingdom way, a merciful way. Um, question. Would you say that you are merciful in how you love your neighbors? Because this has a lot to do with the royal law. I mean, it's a sentence after it, right? Is mercy in view when you see your neighbors? Or is it transactional, right? They gave me a, a generator. Uh, I mean, that's generous, but I'm going to give them this, right? She brought me food. I'm going to bring. Is it transactional the way you love your neighbors? Or is it merciful? Because if you're a Christian, you know mercy more than anyone. Or do you have reasons why you hold back? Even with your brothers and sisters, right? You see a name on the participants thing. And you're like, oh, Lord, I need mercy. But do you have mercy in how you love your brothers and sisters, right? And how you hold on to judgments or let go of judgments, um, whether they're true or false, right? Justifying why you hold on to grudges, right? Are you ready to forgive? Because um, remembering, you know, God's, Biblically, we are to love mercy. We are to love mercy. God's principle will, will hold true when you're up for judgment, right? That the, merc the unmerciful get no mercy. And that's, that's 
that's heavy. I mean, that's that's what the scriptures say say here. Uh, there's a there's a quote I'll read um, by a commentator. He says, um, "The mercy we show, Guzik says, the mercy we show will be extended to us on the day of judgment, and that mercy triumphs over judgment." Right? What goes around comes around, and that is true of of mercy. So we got to put aside whatever reasons we might fail to live up to loving our neighbor as ourselves. Um, he, he says that in considering mercy, remember, we too will be judged by what? What are we going to be judged by? Specifically, right? Look in the scripture. It says, by the law that sets you free. You know, if you're in Christ, you've, you've been set free. What an amazing condition, free from fear that you've already blown it, um, free from the fear that you've already messed up, and free from the fear that you're going to face accusations with a guilty verdict as you approach judgment. You have been set free, and it's called the law of liberty. Kind of two opposing words, right? But, but that's mercy, you know? This is a law that it redefines our relationship to God and to our neighbor, our fellow man. This is the only law that we are bound by as Christians. And I'll say bound by willingly. Um, the, the law of love, that's our title, right? To be bound by the law to love others. Freedom in Christ, um, that's a wonderful phrase. It's from Galatians chapter five. I wanna turn there, uh, Galatians five. This is a communion thought for you guys at home. Galatians 5, verse 13 through 14. What in the world is freedom in Christ, right? Freedom in Christ. Um, freedom in Christ is defined in Galatians 5, uh, 13 through 14. It's better called freedom in Christ to love. That's probably the better phrase. Spell it out, right? James, uh, James hints at it. Paul talks to it. Galatians 5, 13. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. Do not use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then it says we'll destroy each other, essentially, if we go the other way. Um, but you should see here, it's all over the scriptures. You can, you can do Matthew 22 time and time again. Loving our neighbor is the most biblic biblical thing that we could do as a church. And our city needs it. Um, even next year, next month, our neighbors, they need to see God's love. As men and women who've been set free, can we do this? Are we free and, and choosing to, to do this, right? Use, I love Galatians 5.13. It says, use your freedom um, to serve one another in love or a little edgier word, but use your freedom to slave to one another in love. Like let that be your only law that you bind yourself to in a willing way. Can we show love for our neighbors? Cause if we don't, there isn't much hope for our city, right? Extending concern and mercy and being the kind of people that can also therefore expect to find mercy at the very last day. That's, that's, that's that's what it is um when i was a kid i i told you about my game mercy but i also played another game called rock paper scissors shoot and i know that you guys know this game it's older than me so every age group i'm sure has played this game but what that game teaches me is that some things beat other things and what we see in the scripture here is that mercy triumphs over judgment that God rejoices in being able to overcome his judgment with his mercy. He rejoices to be able to do that. His love beats all. And, and as we prepare our hearts to do communion, let's rejoice in the mercy of God. Let's rejoice as we ready ourselves to be ever more like the heart of our God in the way that we extend and show love and mercy to those that we see this week. So with that, uh, let's pray for our communion. Uh, dear God, thank you so much that, um, God, you have, 
you want to overcome your judgment with your mercy, God. That mercy does triumph. And uh, I pray, Lord, that we can be agents of mercy, God, generous in it and generously receiving it, God. We have that hope and we rejoice that we have the hope of your mercy. And we pray, Lord, that um, we can be transformed by it and transform those around us, Lord, by showing uh, your mercy and just how beautiful it is. Help us to um, see needs and have compassion, God. See hearts and just assume that people need Jesus and assume even if they're disciples that people still need Jesus, God. We need a brother and a sister um, to, to remind us what it is to be in you, God. I thank you for communion. That's what this time is about, Lord, to be unified together and to give Jesus to each other and reminders of how amazing you are and how rich in mercy you've been towards us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.